In today's video, we are going to be painting this cool little skull up right here. And while I'm going to do a lot of different techniques, I'm going to be using a lot of erasing techniques. I'm going to be using texture stencils, and I'm going to start with helping create dimension by this blurred and out of focus background I'm putting in the back. The real star of the show here is going to be about form and cast shadow and the difference between form and cast shadows. So this is the next step versus just working with basic forms. And the reality is that your basic forms, your spheres and your triangles and squares and things like that that we may use for exercise, those are to teach you how light falls off of a surface. And those basics are very important to understand because everything you do forward in creating a piece of art is going to deal with creating the form and the cast shadows to create your structure. So I want to point out looking at these crossbones right here. I'm painting this front crossbone and then there's a crossbone in the rear. What's going to give us the look that we're going to get before it's all said and done? Well, let's not get confused by all the textures that we're going to be putting in here. And let's look and see where the light is coming. The light is coming from the top and the left hand side. So as light is coming from the top and left hand side, the light is able to create a little glimmer of light in the rear crossbone and shine forward, as you can see here on the left side of this picture. See how it's catching light? We'll do a little more work as we continue to move on with this picture. Now we are creating some cast shadow over on the right hand side, but we're not creating cast shadow over at the front of the skull and even though it may look like i came in really tight to that that is all part of the form shadow and the cast shadow will be coming in from the right hand side there's also a little gap off of the tooth there because the skull does not reach down on top of the other skull there's a very good close-up of the painting later in the video and as you can see there's cast shadow over on the right hand side there is no cast shadow casting onto the lower skull in the very front because the light is able to travel in there and get underneath. And on the right-hand side of that tooth, you'll notice there's a little gap in light over there as well because we're not actually touching that lower skull. So always remembering with your form that you're going to be more rounded then you're going to be more gradual on your transitions. So what we're going to do is look, take a good close look at how the cast shadows are formed over here. And what's going to happen is we got that dark shadow there and then we're going to create that occlusion underneath the crossbone because no light, there's no light to be reflected back there because we're already getting a cast shadow and there's no nothing left to bounce any light back. So you get that really tight occlusion shadow in there. We're going to have that occlusion shadow appear in multiple different places in this painting. And now as we get into the eye socket, there are multiple bones that can affect the structure of the eye socket. I'm not going to bother to name all of them, although, well, maybe we will. And to get that look that you're peering inside that socket, it's understanding how there's going to be those bones inside that structure and it's giving a little bit of something for some light to reflect off of inside those surfaces. Sure, you could just darken in the eye sockets and make them very dark. People do it all the time, and that works out in certain cases, and it's got a, there's a place for that. But understanding how light will fall inside that surface is the same as any other object. There is a question of the form and how light is going to play inside on that form. Of course, being inside the eye socket, you don't get a great deal of light in there. So as you can see, I'm using a texture stencil. So I'm not being perfectly accurate with my eye sockets here, but I want to give that rough illusion that you're able to look deep down into that eye socket. I think it creates a great dimension in that art. 
using my amazingly detailed sketch and artwork. I'm cutting a paper stencil so I can create that sharp line over there. Remember, as I mentioned, we always will have that line exist as we move forward. And then I'm going to create my shadow there. And then notice I'm going to use my eraser on the right hand side because as you have that crack, it'll stand proud just a little bit and catch just a little bit of light on the right hand side because the light is coming from the left. Now we're going to move into the nasal cavity. And again, like the eye socket, there are some bones in there that you may want to be aware of or pay attention to. Go look them up. And so that it's not just this black hole inside there or you're not having to actually completely make them up even though again i'm not being perfectly accurate here we want to get that illusion that we can peer off inside that nasal cavity of course i'm putting in the cracks which are the dif differences between the different bones so it would be in your best interest to look up the different bones of a skull at some time in the future and so now is where we get into the real meat and potatoes of the picture. And we're going to put a lot of detail in here. But ultimately, no matter how much texture and how much stuff I put in here, that is all just the icing on the cake. The important part of the entire picture is our form shadows, which it is important to know whether your shadows as they're formed, need to be against a very sharp edge or if they need to be rounded. And as you notice, coming out of the eye sockets, they're very round. And as you come over on the right-hand side off that bone, the, the shadow needs to be a little crisper and tighter. And as we move down the face, all of the shadowing that we're doing now is merely form shadow. Why is that form shadow? Well, because it's not cast upon something. When we got down to the skull that's beneath the skull and we got down below the crossbones, that was our cast shadows with our occlusion in the, included in there. But here, we don't have really cast shadow. We have almost exclusively form shadow making up the dimensions, the shape of our skull. Now, of course, as we get to the top of the skull, we are simply dealing with a sphere with maybe just a little bit of modeling going on. So it's not perfectly round like a sphere. And what's important to keep in mind is that the structure is a pretty dull structure, correct? So your light will be a lot more diffuse than if it was on a bright and shiny object. When you have bright and shiny objects, your highlights tend to get very crisp and very, very bright, whereas the duller a surface is, the more diffuse, the less bright the highlights get, and usually you, they don't get as sharp and as crisp. Now, as we work our way into the smaller details, Again, we are just simply starting to deal with form. We've got these little tiny pock marks and stuff like that. And of course, up here we have some damage where the skull was damaged in some way. Maybe he was hit with a sword or something. That's why his skull's up there. And so it's the same. You create this shadow inside the depression. And then as the right-hand side away from the light is seen standing proud it catches a little bit of that crisp highlight and again how crisp that highlight is and how tight it is next to something is what determines what that form looks like even on those little tiny details so all you're doing is tightening things up and as you come along you're still following the basic structure of form you notice where your light source is coming from and then you have your depression of darks and then you have your highlight anyway i'm going to wrap this up this is starting to get a little bit long i appreciate everyone you've coming by i am bill kennedy with the airspace y'all have a great day bye